Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today I'm freezing to death. The next time you see me, I'm changing. I can tell you that right now. We walked outside and I was like, oh God, why am I doing this? Because we've got, let's say, 100 plus videos. My wife said, let's have fajitas. I said, great. She goes, why don't you go look at your videos to see how you made your fajitas in the, in the past? And I was like, I don't think we have a fajita video. How do you have a flat top grill and not a fajita video? So here we go. My take on my version of steak fajitas. You guys ready? I'm getting another jacket. All right, I'm hopefully going to show you guys a really cool trick. I have not mentioned it in all my other videos, but I do it actually quite a bit. I think you should be pretty surprised. All right, we got the common ingredients, right? We got the the bell peppers, the onions. I got a little tomatoes coming up. I got some lime because I'll just love the intensity. Some avocado to go inside of it since I already had a dirty, a dirty cutting board. Today we're using ribeyes because the other day we used the ribeye for the ground burgers doesn't matter uh fresh ground burgers so this was a three pack we use these commonly you guys know that i buy them on sale in bulk so we're just going to take the bones out um pound them out uh, a lot thinner that way we can get a really good marinade on them let's go over here to the marinade to speed up the process i've already done this i'm gonna show you okay cast iron pan on the stove inside the house because it's too damn cold outside this is the point i've got some good olive oil in there okay with that, I just warmed it up and added about two to three large tablespoons of minced garlic. I'm a garlic fan. That's just what I do. And I let that garlic start to get in like lightly browned inside that oil. So you're almost creating like a, a garlic oil, okay? Then I added your common ingredients, your Cuban, your paprika, your chili powder, a little bit of seasoned salt, black pepper, uh, Mexican oregano, and chipotle chili powder. Okay, so that's all in this mix right now. Once we're done pounding our meat, or beating our meat, we're gonna make sure that we rub that it's in. It's too cold for that. <laughs> once, we, once we get done with that, then we're gonna get that all marinated our meat, and we're gonna, oh, lime juice. I got lime in there, fresh lime, a whole lime. We're gonna let it marinate for about an hour. So let's get started on the meat, you ready? Alexa said it was 43 degrees. She lied. There is no way. She lied, she liar. Alexa's a liar, Alexa didn't know God almighty, it's cold. Alright. Alright, really quick. I'm gonna do one like always, and you guys can imagine what the second one looks like. So carve out the bone. You gonna mention your mermaid cutting board? This is my daughter's. Do not make fun of it. <laughs> this is my fancy dancy meat pounder now i get a lot of comments <laughs> unnecessarily i can promise you that a lot of inappropriate calling comments. it a butt plug i can promise you one thing it's not a butt plug it's a two-sided meat uh meat mallet you can find it on my links in the description below it comes apart you can use one that tears the meat apart or keeps it pretty nice today we're tearing it apart because i want all those nooks and crannies for that marinade that we made that's already frozen to be able to get in there so pretty simple Why am I doing this? It's not necessarily for tenderness. It helps flatten it out to create more of a surface area, right? So we want more seasoning per meat ratio. And it helps it cook faster. We're gonna use really, I would say high temps today, but with that flat top as cold as this, we might have to struggle. We might have to get it off a of low today. Same thing. I know what you're saying traditionally ribeye is not the cut of meat for fajitas we have ribeyes all the time so i went to the store the flank steak was 9.49 a pound and the skirt skate skirt steak was like 13.49 a pound we bought these on sale for 6.79 a pound just use whatever you got that's the whole benefit about cooking all right i'm gonna pound the other one out here let me show you real quick so we'll get this process started 
I'm not worried about a huge amount of marinade because once this is marinated, we are going to come back and re-season it. So just get like a little fine dusting. It's got the olive oil, the garlic, and all those traditional seasonings in there. Just like that, okay? Just go ahead and get both sides really liberally. This is kind of like the, uh, the idea of would you rather have a dry seasoning or a wet marinade? So I kind of basically just do the combination of both. I like them. I don't care if I marinate it or if I just dry season it and let it sit out here. So to me, this is like the best of both worlds. All right, guys, so it's been about an hour. We just let the meat sit outside. It's plenty cold outside, not a problem with it. Like I said, we got our vegetables pre-cut uh, pre and our flat top is cutting up the temperature. The secret I wanted to show you, okay? Anytime you're mixing um, multiple spices, you see people either take a tablespoon or a teaspoon. I don't know why, I've just got this big thing. That's why I don't season flour because I feel like once you throw the flour out, you just throw all the extra seasoning that you put in there out. So what I do, I always take just like, we always have these plates for a pizza or something like that, right? Just a styrofoam paper plate. You can use whatever you want to. But if you imagine a piece of meat on your plate, right? So let's say the surf, circumference of the plate on the inside was about the equivalent of that. You see what I'm getting at? So then you would just take your, your seasoning and kind of do the same thing with it, right? So this is the top of the thing little cumin powder little goes a long way so that's kind of like the idea behind it and what i'll do i'll do this accordingly to how much product how much seasoning i think i need and pretty much you can get a real close ballpark chili powder this stuff's hot obviously i would not sprinkle the whole thing so let's just give or take a couple dashes right then i'll go back over it and if i was really doing it for four step for one side, one side, one side, one side. I would do this. So I'll just go one side, one side, one side, one side. And I would do that with all of them. Right? So you can mix and match your concoction. And stuff so that like that. And that would be like how you would make your marinade for, or your seasoning like for a marinade then. Correct. Or just a dry rub. A lot of times I mix a lot of different spices. Let's just, I didn't use garlic today. Uh, garlic powder because I had so much garlic infused in that oil. So the typical spices I'm using today, I have Mexican oregano, oh, coriander. Here's some coriander, I haven't used that yet. Kind of like off topic, but um, so we have cumin, coriander, a little seasoned salt, black pepper, paprika, and a little chili powder. And I've got Mexican oregano already in there. Um, but that just gives you a quick idea. I always try to teach you guys one, at least one thing from every single cook, right? So if you've tuned in right now, you see he is seasoning a styrofoam plate. <laughs> <laughs> voila. You're probably wondering. Somebody got on to me. They said it's not voila. It's voila. Who knew? Who knows that? I can't even pronounce the English dictionary. Not a Tennessee boy from the South, I tell you. No, that. and voila. That's how we say it. All right. But look, it gives you a nice little dry rub, right? So I'm just going to lightly... I don't want my vegetables over seasoned. This is the, one of the very few times when I have fajitas at a restaurant that I actually appreciate a lightly seasoned vegetable because I think the flavors come through. And so then what I'll do, right? There you go, just a nice mix concoction. And you don't have a lot of waste. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why not just season the steaks? I'm just talking about when you add different seasonings and stuff like that together. All right. Flat top's hot. We don't need a lot of oil. Let's go, uh, let's go and crank it up to about medium. Okay. Oil for the ribeyes. Oil for the ribeye. Oil for the vegetables. Here we go. This side's been seasoned. We're shooting about 425 to 450-ish.
It's not going to take long because we pounded our meat. God, you smell that? Mm -hmm. Mm. Immediately, the beef fat, everything. And the dump method for the vegetables. Just dump it all on. Try to get them spaced out really good. All right, for the vegetables, I'm just gonna do a little s and I sprinkled just a touch, I mean just a touch of that seasoning on there, but I don't wanna overpower it. So just salt and pepper for me, and then we cut up the, uh, the ribeye and mix it in with the, the, the uh, vegetables. I think the ribeye is gonna have plenty of seasoning to come through. All right, while our stuff's cooking, I just wanna show you one last trick. If I keep showing you guys all my tricks, I'm not gonna have any tricks left. To steam a tortilla on the flat top grill. You know, instead of just putting them on there, warming them up, sometimes they get crunchy, you forget about them. Just use some paper towels, line your tortillas up, and just wet your paper towel. And just wrap them like this, and you can put all this right on the flat top, and it's gonna start steaming your tortillas. We're gonna set those aside. Oh yeah, see that crust? That's all that marinade. That got a little hole in it, but see the crust? There we go. Now, tell the people why we chose to cook the ribeyes whole instead of slicing the steak first and then cooking it. I think fajitas are really good when the in ingredients stand out on their own. I think so many times in different cuisines, even American cuisine, that we just over season the hell out of everything and everything just gets put in like the same category. So fajitas would be the same way. If you just pre-cut your fajita mix, I mean your steak and put it in with your vegetables and added the same seasoning, then when you put it in tortilla, you're not really getting like different bites of flavor. A pop here, a pop there. You know, you burst a tomato here, you get a fresh bell pepper here. You get a nice uh, ribeye, you know, it's all about balance and what you're tasting. All right, our steaks are pretty much done. I'm gonna pull those off. I'm gonna let them rest before we cut into them. That's the biggest part. You want those ribeyes to absorb that moisture back in. See how those vegetables kind of naturally picked up some of that flavor without seasoning it? I think that's key. I think that's, that allows your vegetables to stay fresh without overpowering them. I mean, he doesn't like that right there. Mm. All right, when it's 17 degrees outside, it does not take long for your uh, ribeyes to uh, calm down, let the juices get back in there. Um, so here we go. So this is the idea. So I say match the hatch, right? So you got to have pieces that are bite size. So I typically would cut this right across because you don't want to be pulling out a six inch piece of steak. All that crust, you never get that at a restaurant. So good, I don't even want to put sour cream or anything on it. Look, all those natural juices start running down into the vegetables now. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. All right, you want to build one? Mm. I might just eat it like that. It's good. All right, so you're going to build it whichever way you like to. I'm just going to use a standard a cupping of ingredients. I love cilantro. They can probably hear me chewing. <laughs> I can hear you chewing. Fresh avocado. A little salsa. A little sour cream. All right. 
little fresh veg. And then to top it off, just a hand of lime over that steak. All right, guys, there you go. Our version of like a kicked up style fajitas. We do it with skirt steak, flank steak, anything that's on sale. Heck, we've done it with sirloin, anything like that. I think the secret is getting that wet marinade on, adding just a little bit of dusting and seasoning and getting that good crust. It's something that we seem like we never get at our Mexican restaurant. And also, whatever you do, just make it the way you like it. Just use a flat top grill. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Steak fajitas cannot be any better. Mm, let's go. We need to get inside. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs>